Welcome back to episode 12 of Little Rock Ridge. Today we will be adding the final attraction to the park as well as the last finishing touches. First, let's just have a quick look back at who built what so far. In the top left corner of the park we have our sundial, named Tomahawk, created by Yura. Over on Main Street, Plastic Swans built this Red Dead inspired Just a Memento. On the east side of the park you'll find Nerd Chacho's compact flawless, Tempestata. In episode 4, Combat Wombat added this beautifully skinned insanity called Black Gold. Up the top of Main Street you'll find potentially the most detailed Zozo ever made, Ralph's Rickety Rotator by Sublines. The one and only Wix created this beautiful coffee shop in episode 6. Back up next to Tomahawk we have this stunning duo of shops by Ferrana. With this iconic airship who could forget Frontier Flyers by Christine. Completing the western side of this western park was Paulsley's incredible Hellion skin, the Revolver. In episode 10, Zelixor finished off Main Street with a Hats Fantastic and a kickflip named the Kickin' Mare. Finally, last week SC Reconcile dug a huge hole and popped one of the best mine train coasters I've ever seen into it. So here we are in episode 12 and how could we possibly top all of that? I'll tell you how. FSF Ranger. That's how. FSF Ranger is a legend builder in the Channel 5 gaming community, came in second place in the mini park contest with Black Forest Park, and is the absolute master of dark rides with creations such as Night Shift, Night of Damnation, and Ghost Ship, which has over 160,000 views on YouTube. I'm sure you figured out by this point, Ranger will be adding a dark ride to Little Rock Ridge. What type of dark ride I hear you ask? Well dear viewer, the answer to your question is an indoor log flume. As FSF Ranger is a voiceless creator, he wrote a script for me to read on his behalf. However, I'm sure you're absolutely sick of my voice by this point. Here to present Pioneer's Creek on his behalf, with one of the loveliest voices I've ever heard, is one of the biggest planet coaster streamers on Twitch, Poetry Slam 78 Hi, I'm FSF Ranger. Playing Planet Coaster since the release, I specialize in very large, detailed dark rides and theme parks, which I show on my YouTube channel. Now that Moomin has given me the task to build a size-restricted, compact dark ride inside his new series, the challenge was on. Building without DLC and TMTK is absolutely no problem for me, but building a dark ride inside a 13 by 14 grid is the exact opposite of what I normally do. Don't let the terms small and compact fool you because the effort is nearly the same. So I started where all things begin and placed down the ride. An indoor log flume to be exact. After some time, I figured out what the best and longest track possible for a dark ride this size could be. Then I built a nice curvy queue to fit a lot of guests in it. Now the basic structure was done. It was building time. The queue and station were the first things I wanted to be done. I used a lot of wooden pieces to build shelters on both levels of the queue. After that, I added rocks and foliage and a small pond, including water fountains. I then covered the tracks near the station with wooden planks and began to build a big western themed house. The exit is leading the guests above the track, so I built a wooden bridge to connect everything smoothly. A small western forest was the first scene you would encounter when the ride is starting. I have used colorable panels and curtains for the realism factor, followed by a lift disguised as a mining shaft, which is leading to the main scene of the ride. I've never actually used them before, but the red desert rocks were now my best friends. I built a canyon and used glowing panels and one of the round targets, which came with the later free update to simulate a sunset. You need a lot of patience to connect all the triggers, but the results definitely speak for themselves. The next scene is again another mining scene with some lighting effects. I really wanted to have all scenes pitch black and emerging from the darkness when the ride vehicle is coming. A small western town was the next scene and I tried to build very tiny houses for it. The track goes into a jail next and drops down to the ground floor into a campfire scene. After that, I built a showdown inside a saloon with bandits and cowboys, and I used a lot of detailing in this room. I was glad there were so many good western-themed animatronics in the vanilla game. Normally, I create TMTK atoms myself using Blender when I'm building a different theme. Before the ride goes back to the station, it passes a flooded canyon. Now it was time to give the ride a realistic outside look. 
and placed a mix of rock work, foliage, and western buildings around the track ride. The roof was the only part of the ride which guests couldn't see, so I placed a lot of cables and air conditioners on it. The last step is to place outside lights, adding more triggers, sound effects, and music to everything. And of course, more detailing here and there. A wise man once said, the last 10% affects half of the ride and makes it great. This was my contribution to Moomin Little Socks Little Rock Ridge. I hope you guys like it. Thank you FSF Ranger for this incredible creation, and thank you Poet for that wonderful voiceover. If you don't already, make sure to go give Poet a follow on Twitch. You won't be disappointed. Despite being compact, Ranger has created one of the most detailed and stunning log flumes I've ever seen in Planet Coaster. Although, as soon as he joined the project, I knew I wouldn't be disappointed. With the final attraction in place, it's about time we open the park. And boy does it feel great to have guests wandering around. Introducing guests to the park allows me to see where traffic is heaviest, where the queue lengths meet demand, whether the park is well staffed, and much more. After spending a good hour adjusting ride prices and staff rosters, it's time for the finishing touches. Nighttime lighting is one of those necessary evils. It sometimes feels like a waste of time when the majority of parks only ever open during daylight hours. However, some will open for certain after dark events like Halloween. I used a variation of different fixtures to illuminate paths, plazas, buildings, and shrubbery. For the performance area, it was important to add some theatrical lighting. I created a tea stand out of poles and added some event lights on top. As a former lighting engineer, it pains me that these units can't be rigged and focused properly, but equally, having independent brackets would be a pain for most players.
As the festoon isn't emissive, I added some area lights to create the glow that would naturally exist. Once again, I manually added some emission from these billboards and toilet sign. I added some floor lighting by the ATMs and, you guessed it, added my own light emission. Next I moved on to bins and benches, ensuring there are plenty dotted around the park to meet demand. And there we have it, Little Rock Ridge is complete. I'd like to once again say an enormous thank you to everyone who contributed to the park and an even bigger thanks to all of you for watching. As of right now, Little Rock Ridge is officially available on the workshop, so make sure to go and download the park yourself and take a wander around. I'll leave you with some extended cinematics and stay tuned for a final park tour coming very soon. It's goodbye from me and goodbye from Yura. Goodbye. Plastic Swans. Bye for now. Nerd Chacho. Bye bye. Combat Wombat. Goodbye. Sublines. Bye everyone. Wix. Goodbye. Farana. Doi. Christine. Bye everyone. Paulsley. Goodbye. Zelixor. Bye now. SC Reconcile. See ya. And Poet pretending to be FSF Ranger. Goodbye. See you in the next series. Thank you.